last year, um, March, the president um, placed a ban on artisanal and small scale mining sector. Um, when the ban was placed, the president passed the interministerial committee, which he formed around the same time, to, as it were, um, sanitize and regularize the artisanal and small scale mining sector. And through that, we formed district mining committees. Um, we've actually, through the sanitization, um, Operation Vanguard was launched, and they've done several arrests. As we speak, about 600 excavators have been seized. Um, a lot has gone in, but whilst we're doing that, the president had it up at the back of his mind that um, our brothers and sisters who were actually um, involved in illegal mining, either to uh, Galam Sea, uh, needed a place uh, to work, i.e. giving them licenses to work. So he, uh, the president advised the committee to send most of them to Tokwa School of Mines to learn how to mine um, responsibly. That has been done. So far, we've trained about 3,000. We also saw that the use of technology is important to uh, monitoring uh, illegal mining activity. So the committee has put, um, procured some drones uh, to that effect. We've also trained about 300 uh, NAPCO graduates who will be actually um, working as drone pilots uh, to monitor these uh, concessions. We've gone on to do the vetting of licenses. We're given 1,350 licenses by the, uh, to, uh, from, um, by the president to actually ascertain the ver veracity of them. Um, the vetting process started on the 3rd of September. As we speak, the team um, is in Itiwa. Um, ascertaining the concessions, what we're doing is we're reconciling or ensuring that it should correspond to a certain lines in somewhere, and that has been going on for some time. We're also putting excavators together because more many people have said that there's about 5,000 excavators within the system. We're not sure, so at the end of this period, we should be able to know how many excavators we have in the system, how many concessions we have in each district, and the number of miners that we have in each district. When the reforms that are coming out is that these miners' um, welfare needs to be catered for. So the committee is coming out that each miner must be insured. Once you have the insurance, um, you turn into injury or whatever, then you're covered um, when you work on a mining site. Um, miners are also going to get ID cards. And we also bring the community mining scheme where our brothers and sisters who used to work illegally and have been trained at uh, Topper School of Mines. Yeah, um, giving concessions to work um, under the community mining scheme and therefore paying taxes and all that because one important thing is that most of the galamseas or illegal mines were not paying taxes to the, uh, the government and also the environment was being depleted so all these reforms capture this so that we can actually have a, um, a healthy mining um, sector within the country is there a definite time scale as to when um, they are going to get to work the, um, the, the lifting of the ban uh, basically is contained within the roadmap. Okay. The roadmap, uh, once we keep checking the boxes, i.e. Um, um, evacuation of excavators, um, vets and all that, then we're actually getting uh, close to the end of the ban. So basically that's what it is. So if I push you further, uh, looking at things, it will be in 2019 that everything will start? I'm not sure. What we're doing is that all I know is that the president wants the small scale miners, legal ones, to go uh, spend this Christmas um, in a good mood. Okay. I'll be happy this Christmas. But the lifting of the ban is contained within the roadmap. Thank you very much.